Lake Champlain is home to one of North America's greatest mysteries. Join Small Town Monsters as we explore America's Loch Ness, following researchers, listening to eyewitnesses, and examining the evidence. This is On the Trail of Champ. Champ Search is currently the only Vermont-based organization dedicated to proving and documenting the existence of mysterious creatures in Lake Champlain. Katie Elizabeth dedicates a large portion of her time to the research and documentation of sightings year-round. Every year I'm trying to add more equipment and new ideas and just like gathering more eyewitness reports and just fitting together that those pieces of this big puzzle this puzzle of this enigma basically. Um, every year I try to get better at my camera skills. You know, we've got tripods set up and, and they come up so fast that you don't even, it's just one of those things you just never, oh, you're never really prepared when you see Champ. Um, but I plan on just elaborating and getting more technology involved and maybe some sponsorship. That would be great too. Um, all of this you know, comes out of my own pocket. All of the equipment that I have comes out of my own pocket and it gets very expensive. But I mean, it's just one of those things you have to be on the lake all the time to have these experiences. You can't have these experiences if you're, you know, sitting on your computer or whatever. And I've just been extremely fortunate enough to have captured video and audio recordings of these animals. Katie often travels to various parts of the lake for routine observation of the waters. We are at the site of the Champlain Bridge. This bridge connects Vermont to the state of New York. Um, there has been a couple of sightings here off of this bridge. Um, there was two women driving across the bridge one afternoon and one looked over and saw this dark shape um, moving in the water. And she said to her friend in the, in the back seat, she said, hey, there's something out there. And she looked and she goes, oh my God, it's Champ. And this big long neck came out of the water. She said it was as tall as her and she was around 5'2 in height. So, and then she said it gradually went down and it went crawling off towards Vermont, to the Vermont side. Researching on the water itself is crucial during the summer months. Recently I ended up having a scuba diver join my team and to get a visual of these animals would totally be amazing just to correlate and, and prove that that's exactly what it is. Go take a dive in Lake Champlain. Hopefully, we'll I'll see Champ. Thank you. 
we are sitting here um, in Arnold's Bay, and off to your left is Button Bay. Um, I've got many recordings, echolocation, as well as ultra-low frequency recordings out here in this area, um, further out towards Basin Harbor also. And right where we're sitting is a perfect central spot to see if we can get any sort of, you know, signal on the hydrophone system here. This is our underwater uh, surveillance system here. And it's basically a LED camera that we put on the side of the boat. Um, we usually get it down to the bottom. And as you can see, the visibility is quite murky um, due to the algae content in the water. Um, the hotter it gets here on Lake Champlain, the more green the water gets. So usually around the winter time, it's extremely clear, but right now the visibility is a little poor but we're just gonna keep it down there and hopefully Champ will pass by. I worked uh, as a park ranger at Kingsland Bay in the 90s for six years. I've grown up in this area my whole life. Seth Slayton is a Vermont local and lifelong fisherman who saw something unusually large near the mouth of Otter Creek. We are on Big Otter Creek, only it's a, almost near the mouth. We're probably 200 yards, a little less, from where it empties into the broad lake. And some of the deepest parts of the lake are not far off from there. It wasn't particularly well lit, but for some reason the stars, it was bright enough, so I was just looking down the river here and probably about 100 yards. I was just happened to be looking, just kind of glancing, and I just saw this something surfacing, okay? And uh, it went left to right, so basically like uh, all the way across, almost all the way across, disappeared for a minute and went back, did the same thing kind of like surfacing and uh, you know it was it wasn't totally bright but it was illuminated somewhat so I could see I kind of snuck down the road here and tried to get closer and I saw it two two more to do two more passes so it did a total of three back and forth across the river but I couldn't get a good picture with my camera on my phone and uh, you know there are some big sturgeons supposedly but it's not really that wasn't consistent with a sturgeon or what they, how they even really feed. I was skeptical at first when I was a kid, but when in the 90s when I lived right on Kingsland Bay, which is two points to the north here, just around the corner, uh, especially at night, we would see things out in that bay. I mean, I couldn't explain it. And my wife at the time was a big believer, and she and her mom had actually seen a really good sighting down in Port Henry when she was quite young. She grew up in Whitehall, New York. Nighttime research provides a chance to explore both the waters of the lake and the marshes, relatively undisturbed by outside human presence. And actually on the other side of this, we found like a path right through the reeds and everything. <clears throat> Pretty much like a slide type of mark right through. I mean, it could be a beaver trail, but could be champ, who knows. We're in a marsh system that connects to uh, what we call Otter Creek that flows into Lake Champlain. There have been a lot of on-land sightings in this area, so it's a great place to check out at night. Um, we think that these animals are mostly nocturnal, so this is a great time to so see if we get any um, eye shine that has also been reported.
Katie believes that the unusual echolocations that she and others have captured in the lake on multiple occasions speak volumes about the real possibility of CHAMP existing, warranting further research. A hydrophone system basically is an underwater microphone. It is used in cetacean research, which is whales and dolphins. And it's an underwater microphone where you can listen to underwater sounds. And that has been extremely successful with listening to multiple animals in this area of the lake. Tonight we're going to do a little experiment and we're going to use some native fish bait here, um, some salmon and other things. <laughs> um, we're going to throw it out into the lake, the GoPro attached with an LED light. Hopefully the light will attract something, hopefully champ, and we'll see what happens. And we do have the hydrocomb system running here and hopefully we can get some good recordings possibly of echolocation. Um, perhaps this animal could smell the bait and come closer to check it out. There was one winter sighting where um, the location was actually Port Henry, New York, which is a very shallow area, and someone had seen a champ animal pop their head up through the ice, which is very bizarre. Winter at Lake Champlain presents a totally different environment. The cold northern New England climate in the area brings snowfall and frigid temperatures for many of the winter months. As a result, many parts of Lake Champlain freeze over. But under the ice, life in the lake goes on, albeit at a much slower pace than during the summer months. Katie conducts CHAMP research around the lake regardless of season, winter being no different. I think that the winter research is um, thinking outside the box. Um, going out on the lake and looking for CHAMP in the winter is not something that I normally had thought to even try. But you don't know until you try. I mean, these animals, we need to figure out where they are actually in this hibernation-like state. It would be really cool to, to figure that out, whether they go in underwater caves, if they're in the marsh buried down in the mud, they could be at the mouths of the rivers, you know, we just don't know. But the only way to kind of use that as a control and use it as a, a scientific type of tool, you know, to compare to the summertime and things like that, you don't know until you try. We're here on Lake Champlain, and as you can see, it's a little bit different than in the summertime. It's frozen over, not completely. Um, this bay here is almost completely frozen. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use an ice auger, drill down in the ice, and put our underwater camera down and our hydrophone system and use the camera as a visual and then use the hydrophone to see if we can hear any abnormal sounds.
these animals, they have to be breathing somehow underneath the ice. And one idea, if they are an amphibian, they could be breathing through their skin and using, actually using frogs, aquatic frogs, as an example of an amphibian, they develop these ice crystals when they start to freeze. And they actually produce a high concentrated glucose through their bloodstream, which acts as a natural antifreeze. So that's how they prevent from freezing solid. And then with reptiles, using the common snapping turtle for an example that is here in this region. The common snapping turtle, they actually bury themselves either partially in the mud or completely in the mud. And while they're down there, they actually have specialized skin cells beneath their tail where they can actually breathe through these skin cells. So it's almost kind of the same thing between the reptile and amphibian, but the thing is that the snapping turtle doesn't need as much oxygen in the water to survive. And then when spring, so, you know, spring comes and it starts to warm up, then they come out on the lake. And when we start seeing frogs and we start seeing snapping turtles and other types of turtles, this is when champ starts to come out and that's when we start having sighting. Once the water reaches around 50 degrees Fahrenheit. For cryptozoological researchers like Katie Elizabeth, the search for champ is not just a hobby or a passion, but a way of life. It is researchers like Katie that are at the front lines of the search for the unknown, and perhaps one day they might get lucky and find that definitive proof needed. Until then, they are sure to keep searching.